Fun with Failure. Hello and welcome to the Neckbeard Experience, episode 14. I've got the continued adventures of three well-known characters. First we have Dressbeard and his trip to the Renaissance Fair, trying to woo his my lady or person of interest by trying to show how awesome he is. Then we've got College Beard and how the Lord of the Hams tries to show off his skill at Counter-Strike. And last but not least, we've got Datebeard, or the Third Wheel. He tries to convince Jumper, or G.I. Joey, is that the only reason that his lady stays with him is because of Stockholm Syndrome. So without further ado, here we go. Here continues the adventure of Dressbeard and his invitation to take Kara to a Renaissance Fair. Here's the two characters. Kara. She's my friend. She loves cosplay, drawing, especially detailed dresses, and almost anything nerdy. Then we've got Dressbeard. You know him, you love him, or hate him. He's the general cringe master in chief. For those of you who don't know what a Renaissance Fair is, it is usually a misnomer and should be called the Medieval Fair. It travels across the United States and is where you go to watch people dress up like medieval knights in stage fight. You buy expensive ye old jewelry and clothing and buy a turkey leg the size of your head. This scene is the one where Dressbeard has determined that it would be his best chance to swoon the lady of his interest. Of course he has a girlfriend, so he probably won't try to bang Kara, but he just wants to make her think that he's awesome. After receiving his invitation, Kara decides to accept it, since she's planning to go as much as possible while it's in town, so that she can draw some cool dress designs she finds. She can sew extremely well, and even made her own prom dress. She figures that while cringy, he can't be that bad after all, even if it is just the two of them together. As previously stated, Dress Spirit has never even looked into getting his license, so Kara has to make the long trip just to pick him up. Through a long grant saying, all guys nowadays are awful and treat women poorly. They don't understand women like I do. Kara somehow survives and they arrive at the fair. Imagine for a moment the reaction from the Asian fighting style master when he watches a tournament consisting of knights and their differing styles of combat. I could take every single one of them without a weapon. They all rely on armor and I could dodge attacks. Kara's account claims that he went on 10 minutes ranting saying, Asian fighting style is so backwater and trash. Besides, the katana is the best sword ever made by man, capable of beating out any and every European style sword. After the crap of his Asian equals best rant, they move on to the clothing and jewelry, and Kara starts to draw the dresses that she really likes. Dressbeard talks with the wandering minstrels and bards who play the instruments at the fair. I am a totally better trombone player than any of these so-called professionals. I want to find out how they got their job being so bad. After he rants to her about his superior skill at musical instruments, they wander over to a guy who duels people with fake swords, and Dressbeard prepares to impress. Of course, crapping on the European fighting styles before stepping up to the plate. Kara's account is the only one I have, because Dressbeard would get upset every time I mention it. As soon as the duel starts off, Dressbeard immediately gets his butt handed to him, and he calls for a rematch. This process repeats itself five times before Dressbeard goes into total meltdown and in the middle of the fair he starts screaming, They cheated and they gave you stupid swords. They're not supposed to be real, that should be obvious, before storming off and making Kara have to hunt him down. Deciding to ignore it for her sake, she spends the rest of the day drawing and watching the theater. Dressbeard stalks the dueling guy and the minstrels. His excuse for doing so was, I was observing his form, and I wanted to catch him cheating. And the minstrels were total crap. I want to see them mess up each time they played. At the conclusion of the day, they leave. And during the 50 minute car ride home, Dressbeard suddenly goes on about how he wants to work at the fair, either as a trombone player or a duelist. Keep in mind that the fair travels across the country year round. His girlfriend is about to throw herself into financial chaos to go to college in the city where he lives, which is out of state for her, and he has been going on about becoming a biomedical engineer ever since middle school. And he attempts to talk logic into him, not to say that being in the fair is bad, just for him it is a stupid plan. Would result in him yelling, I need to show up those idiots working there. 
if they can work there, I need to as well, so I could show them how it's done. This dream plan lasted about a week before he went back to Asian fighting style as crap, and the katana is the god of swords. In his rants, he continuously used anime as his example of Asian fighting styles. Last time I talked about College Beard. He's a guy that we met at college. This is another story that I have about him. Now let's talk about our cast members. There's me. I'm Mel. 20 years old. 6 foot 3. 190 pounds. Ripped and muscular if I say so myself. I play a lot of Counter-Strike. That's relevant later. And I'm kind of a weeb as I play Dark Souls and I watch anime. Then we have Lady K. That's the object of the Beard's affections. She's 19 years old, sporty and athletic, and we've been friends since I was 10 years old. Then we got Mr. A. He's my best friend. We're doing the same university courses, and we're the same age. I've known him since I was 11 years old. He's huge. He's like 215 pounds of muscle. Then we've got Andrew, college beard or Mr. Dorito. He's 20 years old, arrogant as heck, and he's seriously obese. Then we've got a new cast member. This is Pizza Guy. He's an awesome dude, and he plays Counter-Strike with us. He's better than me, and he spends way too much time on Counter-Strike, or he just spends more time than I do. He isn't too big of a character, but he is relevant. Our frolic begins as it always should, on a weekend, just after the flop of a party. So Lady K and I, we're nursing a slight hangover and general tiredness. I boot up my laptop to see a recent message or 50 on Steam from an account I don't recognize. Naturally, I ask who he is, and I get this shockingly fast response that it's Andrew from University. He wants to play some Counter-Strike. Now, I'm a Master Guardian Elite, so I'm not the best, but I'm pretty good. Lady K is a Master Guardian too, and Mr. A is a Gold Nova Master, as he started later than us. And Pizza Guy, he is the best of us. He's a legendary Eagle Master. Andrew, he's a Gold Nova 3, with several thousand hours of Counter-Strike. So he has played far more than any of us, and he's not as good as us. We get into a competitive match, and this is from Dust Till Yawn, and it's going very well. We are up 9-6, to six, and on the first half, we're on the terrorist side. Sorry for all the Counter-Strike buzzwords. Andrew is really bad, like not checking corners, missing hard scoped snipes, where he knew exactly where they were, flash banging his own team by accident, and etc. Additionally, he doesn't seem to know about spray patterns, and he panics a lot. The beardery happens around 12 12 a.m. Now we're on the counter terrorist side, and it is me and Andrew against four of them. Three were pushing up long, where I am with a Nim 4 and a Deagle, but I managed to get them all, but it was a fake. They were all going to be to plant. Andrew rushes over to help. And the other team gets the bomb down. As soon as he sees me, he kills me. Then apologizes because he thought I was a terrorist. We did win, but not before some unwanted expedition. He started saying things like, Girls can't play Counter-Strike. I don't even know why they even bother. Right before Lady K got a sick 1 versus 5 win. At this point, I'm feeling pretty sorry for this guy. As he genuinely sounds lonely. And I can completely relate to that. However... He continues to spout, Girls can't play Counter-Strike. Lines in Skype call after the game is over. Much to my annoyance. Lady K challenged him to a 1v1. Any map, any weapon, and he obviously accepts. Like the neckbeard he is. How else are you gonna get the girls other than to beat them in a video game? Long story short, she beats him horribly bad. And she doesn't die once. And then he complains, This was impossible. She has to be cheating. She wasn't. He did a lot of mistakes like coming out in the open, he didn't account for spray of the weapons, he never walked to hide his noise, not even once. I wonder how the heck he was a Gold Nova master, as he is nowhere near as good as any other Gold Novas. Lady K was mad. She beat him fairly, and then he complains about methods. She yells at him a little bit, not very harshly, or loudly, but it reduces him to tears nonetheless, and he quits the Skype call. As the glorious beta that I am, I decided to go and make sure that he was okay. You know, to be a decent human being for once in my life. I knock on his door, and slowly, the entrance to hell opens. The first thing that hits me is the smell. 
He has had this room for, no joke, two days. And yet it smells rancid, like someone mixed stale sweat, a copious amount of Cheetos, cream cheese, and an odd fishy smell. The next thing that I noticed was the posters on the wall. We're allowed to decorate our rooms, but his posters were all of anime wafus in compromising positions with very few intact clothes on. To my eternal shame, I recognized every single anime girl as I have watched all of the anime. There was Asuna from Sword Art Online, Mikasa from Attack on Titan, and even Kasuka from Berserk. Even after just two days, a large amount of plates have accumulated around his computer, which was where the ham himself resided. Tears dripped down from the peach fluff he called a beard, and his enormous stomach had a mysterious stain on it. I was unsure about what to say. I decided to remain painfully silent. Has only a Brit can, and he breaks down in front of me saying, I hate myself. I want a girlfriend so badly. But all the women out there are stupid witches. They don't know a real man when they see one. Now I'm completely straight. And I've been known to be a bit beardy at times. But I've never broken down in front of a random guy that I hardly know. And insult half of the human population. As mentioned, I'm feeling really sorry for him at this point. But the smell is really getting to me. So I say some kind and thoughtful words to make sure he feels better. Then I quickly exit the room. I told Lady K what happened, and what he said, and the Wafu posters and the fishy smell. She seemed a bit troubled, but that didn't stop us from getting completely drunk again, and playing Brawlhalla while inebriated. I would recommend that by the way. God dang it, why do people have to be so stupid? Just when I thought it'd be the last time that I saw Jar Jar, when he was looking pitiful at the Mexican restaurant, I see this butt stain because I love to bring my girl dinner at work. This is one for the books. Y'all nice guys everywhere? You'll rejoice for Jar Jar because he found reasons why girls, like her, go for jerks like me, and totally overlooked the perfect guys like Jar Jar. Let's get started. I'm Jumper, the Barbarian. Not really. I'm just super tired, super irritated, and super annoyed that the dang Italian place got my takeout order wrong. Then there's Latino Fury, my girl, my muse, my source of calm in my life, and a royal pain in my butt for asking a favor of me. But I do it because I like to be a nice guy for her. Then there's Jar Jar, or the third will, or date beard. He's an amateur psychoanalyst. He's a confirmed brawny. Nice guy, rival apparent. And most of all, a grade A lunatic. Alright, so now on with the rest of the story. So this happened a few days before Thanksgiving, and I have been having a hard time at work, dealing with the general stupidity that entails being an NCO in the army. So long hours for your noble hero. I get a text from LF, asking if I can pick her up some food for dinner, because she's working late too. So she wants Italian, and I want some pizza. So I order a few minutes later, then I'm off to go pick it up. Well, it's not ready. Then it's the wrong order. Then someone else picks it up. But eventually they got it right after like 45 minutes. So I travel across town with our dinner. I arrive at LF's place of business and make my way to the break room. She's a little behind and she said that she would be there shortly. No big deal. But I forgot one key piece of information. I heard a nasally sick voice cry out. Long time no see. Oh, look kids, it's Jar Jar, and he thinks we're friends. And I'm in no mood to deal with this man-child, so I'm very short with him. Not long enough. Don't be like that, I thought we could be friends. What's with the uniform? It's not gray. Are you special forces? I had forgotten that I was wearing my ACUs with multicam pattern. Why do you ask? Because our commander wants to see if we are ready for war, and the transition to Scorpion Camo next year. Look it up. Also, he and our sergeant major are legally insane, so I am not wearing the gray pixelated uniform. No, I am not. This is just the uniform of the day. Why are you even talking to me after the crap you pulled weeks ago? He is still going wide-eyed five-year-old on me, and he's asking me questions about the uniform such as what the badge means, etc, etc. Then he sees my combat patch on my right shoulder, and his eyes light up like Christmas lights. Oh my god, you're a brownie too? What in the name of Odin are you talking about? You've got a horse on the patch. That means you're a military brownie, right? No, that's the 1st Cavalry Division patch. You know what a cavalry is, right? 
He looks dejected like he missed out on the last piece of chocolate cake, and then he gets a serious look on his face. He drops this gem on me like some kind of bipolar gastropod. I know why LF loves you and not me. I am tired, irritated, and hungry, and I smell like an arms room, and I'm kind of mad at JJ for bugging me. So of course, I ask him to enlighten me. LF has Stockholm Syndrome. She is relating to her captures, and she feels your goals are hers. I'm gonna free her from the bonds you placed on her, so consider me your rival. No, your enemy, until LF is free from your clutches. Oh, I am super excited, because I get to lay into this fat turd nice guy, and LF is not here to stop me. And yes, I do remember that this is a place of work, so I do not resort to violence, that comes later in part three. Okay, let me get this straight. I'm holding LF hostage in my home, but I allow her to work, socialize, and still have a place of her own. Did it ever dawn on you, you piece of crap, that the reason LF does not like you is because of your sense of entitlement, your hobbies, your lack of personal discipline, your constant harassment, your atheistic values, and the fact that you are 23 and still live at home with your parents? The fact that you're younger than us? You called us dirty immigrants. You called me a baby killer. Your denial of these issues? You are a freaking stench, you turd blossom. I'm getting sick of this crap, and I'm getting tired of you constantly hitting on my girlfriend trying to put me down, and painting me as some kind of uneducated caveman. I hate most sports. Go Cowboys. Now nah, I love the heck out of Star Wars. 51st Division all the way, baby. And we love DC and Marvel Comics. You are not better than me. If anything, I should thank you, because you pushed a hot woman my way. You piece of basement dwelling crap. I am not the Alpha, but I will be your Omega if you ever talk to me or her in a manner not related to work or to inform us that the building is on fire. So I cut a little deep, but hey, I was tired and angry, and I got my point across. He gets up, tears welling down his face, and he storms out of the break room. I exhale, and I feel relieved, because all the stress of the day was just released. So I guess I should thank him. About five minutes later, LF comes in and wonders why Jar Jar was looking sad as heck. I will tell her later, but not for now. Then I go up and say, Hey, sexy lady, I got your pasta. Thank you very much for joining me for this edition of the Neckbeard Experience. I will have more continued stories of these people later. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, I hope you do that as well. Well, I had over a thousand subscribers. I am very pleased with that and I appreciate all of y'all's support. The next video I'm going to record is answering some of the questions and also I'm going to do the subscriber special of the Neckbeard Experience. You know, that being the subscriber stories. That should be coming out very soon. So I hope you guys have a great day. Take very good care of yourselves and I will see you again soon.